think we have everybody? I think so. Thank you, Wayne. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here today. My, my name is Wayne Williams, and I, just like you guys, we'd let, rather be almost any other place than here today to do something that's very difficult. But it is, uh, we say, uh, sometimes you do what love requires. And because you guys have loved Andrew, you, it, re it requires you to be here today. So thanks for being here as his family and his friends to celebrate his life, uh, a son and a grandson, a brother and a nephew and an uncle and a friend. So we're here to honor Andrew's life and speak fondly of who he was and share the comfort that only friends and family can share. You guys know him in a way that the rest of the world doesn't know him. Uh, the good news is, and there's, a, there's some good news today, that may not feel like it, but the, the good news is that Andrew's going to be okay. You know, that, that Jesus Christ has done for him what none of us could do for him. Uh, so he's okay. He's with Jesus today and probably lots of family members that you may think of as you walk around places like a cemetery. But we're, our job today is to commit him to God's keeping, his memory on earth as well as his eternal destiny. So thanks for being here uh, to do hard things. Uh, we're, none of us are good at saying goodbye. You know, today's a day kind of a goodbyes in some ways, and, and we, we hate that. Uh, grieving's weird. We, none of us are great at that. But it is a, a period of grief that you're in. Uh, but I also invite you to, to comfort one another as families can do and as close friends can do and to, then to receive comfort, um, especially on behalf of uh, Jeff and Vicki and Bennett and all the family deeply grieving their loss. Thanks for being here for them. We need to know that God's with us. His word says that he's always with us. But sometimes, like this week, we wonder, is he really with us? Because it seems like there's a distance, you know. So a lot of the scriptures that I've will lift up, will we'll emphasize that, that God is still with us even in the hard days. So you probably know the 23rd Psalm. Before you click into Sunday School mode and, and, and have it memorized, listen to it as God saying, I'm with you even in this hard moment. David wrote, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness, for his name's sake, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So right now, goodness and mercy are chasing after Andrew and he is in the house of the Lord as Christians we gather and we remember what we believe because sometimes it's hard to think about these things we believe that when Jesus Christ died he paid the penalty for sin and death for all people and that anyone who chooses him would uh, this would not be the end we believe that when God raised Christ from the dead three days later that he made a promise not just to Jesus but to all who would trust in him that this is not the end so I invite you to come here and visit and think about Andrew, but I remind you, in Christ, Andrew won't be here. In fact, he's not even here right now. Maybe part of his reward is to get to peek just a little bit and to see you guys here and to hear the stories that uh, remind you of him. Maybe that's part of his reward. The Bible says, Here and now, dear friends, we are God's children. What we shall be has not yet been revealed, but we know that when Christ reappears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he truly is. And then the Bible says everybody who has that hope purifies themselves because Christ is pure. So to grieving sisters who had lost their brother, Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus, he said these words, I am the resurrection, I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I'm the Alpha the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I'm alive forever. And then Jesus said words that nobody else has ever said. He said, because I live, you also shall live. This is our faith. This is what it means to follow Christ. So I invite you in that spirit to pray with me now. God, you know we don't even know how to pray today. On our best days, it's mystery to us. 
on our tough days, Lord, we don't have any words. We pray that you would come and take whatever groanings that we have and make them make sense to you. We pray for things like grace today, like mercy today, like peace today, comfort today. We probably have pray lots of prayers that don't make any sense, Lord. So we ask you to answer the ones that are in your will. We, we shrink when we think about the idea of death, that, that this would be, there would be an end to this life. So help us, even as we speak about these mysterious things, to live as people who have confidence and faith. Speak to us today your message of life and death and help us to, to live as people who are prepared to die. And when our days here are accomplished, Lord, would you help us to die as those who go forth to live? And then that thing would come true that you promised that nothing in life or death would ever separate us from your love for us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So here's a Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth gives way and mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though waters roar and foam and mountains quake with surging, God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And then from the New Testament, uh, this is, uh, I read this oftentimes in weddings, the 1 Corinthians 13 passage, because Jeff just talked a lot about how Andrew just loved people. He just treated everyone so nice and so kind. And Paul describes that kind of love. He said, love is patient. Love is kind. It doesn't envy or boast. It's not proud. Love does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And love keeps no record of wrongs. Now, cemeteries are great places to make sure you don't take a record of wrongs back to the car with you. It's a place to let go. Let God be God and let the healing begin says that love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres, and that that kind of love never fails. So we thought we would just open it up and say if anyone has a memory or something they'd like to share, uh, that they could do that. I know that Jeff is going to do that. You want to go first? Why don't you come on up here and, and do your part, and if you guys have something you'd like to share, we'll be ready to hear that. This is probably the, the saddest moment <laughs> of my life on our family. This is the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. And I get paid to stand up and speak. I get paid a lot of money to do that. I'd give up everything if I wasn't having to do that here today. Monday morning, uh, I was dreaming early in the morning, and I dreamt that I heard a doorbell ringing, and it rang several times, and then I woke up and realized it wasn't, it wasn't a dream, it was the doorbell. It was 4.30 in the morning. Who would be ringing my doorbell at 4.30 in the morning? I answered the door, and I saw two policemen standing there. Needless to say, I was you know, I'm worried immediately about why are they there? Um, and they asked, could I come in? And, and, uh, and said, uh, we have some very bad news for you. Your son, Andrew, has died this morning. Now, it hit me as a shock. Uh, I had to sit down immediately. The shock the shock went from to disbelief. I actually called the, invest, the investigator and I called the medical examiner, you know, because I, I just couldn't believe it, but they, they confirmed it. I, I went from disbelief to, to grief. And it gripped me like like nothing has gripped me before. I then started having doubts.
Yet I love Andrew enough. Did I hug him enough? Why wasn't I there when he needed me? Part of me and our family died that morning. And there will be a place in our in our heart that'll, that will be missing, but in a way, he will always be in my heart, in our hearts, and we want to, we want to cherish that. He died too soon, too suddenly, and without an answer to why. Almost, it was unbelievable, almost in the midst of all of this on the very first day, in the, even in, I think in the morning of this, I started to get some messages from Andrew's friends expressing their grief and their love for Andrew. Um, Dustin, his cousin, who's here, uh, summed, actually when I talked to him, summed it up, I think, perfectly. He said, Andrew was everybody's friend. Everybody's friend. You weren't too low, you, you, you weren't too high, it didn't matter where you were, he was your friend. I had many texts and calls from people I didn't even know who said, Andrew was my best friend. He was there when I needed someone, and he, and he, and he helped me. I, I, I couldn't count that many best friends for myself. It was incredible. And in, even in my grief, I felt proud. I was proud that he was that kind of person that would be everybody's friend. There aren't enough people like that in this world, and he was that person. He struggled. He had his struggles. He fell down. I never gave up on him. More importantly, he never gave up on himself. He, when he fell down, he got up, and he, and he had to do it more than once. So uh, again, I am so proud that he didn't quit, that he was, he was in it to finish the race. And you know, after so many years of struggling, he went into business with his cousin Dustin in the roofing business and he found success, and he found his calling, you know, as a salesman. He became the number one salesman, uh, you know, for, the, for Dustin's company and achieved professional success, financial success that had eluded him for so many years. And I, I was proud of him that he did that, that he, was, he, he stayed with it and was able to do that. And I know Dustin is going to miss him horribly. We've got to carry on without Andrew present in our world physically. His big smile, and you see pictures, you'll see almost every picture he's got this big smile. And his, how you doing? How he typically greet people. But he'll be here. He'll be here. Pastor Williams played a song for me yesterday when I met with him from, that Vince Gill wrote. I'm going to take just a couple of verses and paraphrase a little bit from them. Go rest high on that mountain. Andrew, our son, your work on earth is done. 
to those of us who are here, someone sent me something that I that spoke to me, and it's Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Anybody else want to share anything brief with the group here today? You, you can do whatever you whatever's easiest. There is a microphone up here for the people who are joining us online. I don't have anything planned. I just speaking of Andrew's smile and how much my children loved him and how much I loved him. I loved him like my own child. So we spent last Thanksgiving together and um Meg and Lauren and Brady, my children, love him so much. They all tried to get in the car to ride with him to lunch. They want to spend every minute with him. He, he was just such a bright light to them of, like Jeff said, just joy and kindness when he was with you. And he just had a bright light about him. He was, um, when you entered the room with Andrew, you just migrated to him. And as Wayne read at the beginning, Psalm 23, I love that verse. Um, you know, when we walk through the valley of shadow of death, and Andrew did walk through the valley, and he, the valley is like a conduit. You enter it, and you exit it. And he has exited into the arms of the Lord. And may goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. And the Lord gives us mercy each day, no matter what our failings are. Every day is a new day for each of us in Jesus' name. And um, as sad as it is for us, I just feel a sense of peace for Andrew. And, you know, I love him. Anybody else want to say something? Yeah. <coughs> Typically, uh, I'd be nervous to get up in front of folks and talk, but uh, he wouldn't, and he never was. In fact, uh, you know, through a lot of this, I found. Uh, my friend Tim, who worked with us, he met his wife because of Andrew breaking the ice. You know, uh, I met mine, my family. Uh, so many of us owe a lot more than we even knew to just being with Andrew. Just, uh, you know, his nature just opened us up to life and, you know, led us to experiences that we might not have ever had without him. And you, uh, you said, you know, did you hug him enough, love him enough? You know, I used to say, you know, things like, ah, I'm gonna be a millionaire one day, you know, big goals. And I believed it, but, uh, you know, when, when we got back together and we said, you know, we really want to kind of focus on, you know, I told him, you know, that's good, but, you know, I want you to focus on small goals, you know, bring yourself back to that front yard when we met up again in Dallas and we we talked about what was important to you and what you wanted to strive for and uh, I said what was what was the most important thing and he said I just want to make them proud and uh, I said that's a goal that you can attain every day and it can lead you to that big one but let's focus on that and he did and he took off and you know there you know, they were just unbelievable things that he was able to accomplish. And we kept going back to that. And I, I know that I've never told anybody how proud I was of more than I did him. And, you know, like we talked about it, but he really, you know, when we met last winter, uh, he, 
he really was like, you know, will you tell my dad how proud? Uh, and I said, I, I will. And when we did, we talked about it, you, me, Eddie, we were all glowing, you know. And uh, I told him, and he, I mean, he was ecstatic. And it was literally a goal that he wanted to reach more than anything. That was, you know, the most important thing to him in a moment in his life. When he needed to find who he was, and and he did it. And I was so proud. And I didn't do anything for him. Your love, who you were, that led him, that, that drive to that goal. He... He, you know, had issues with, you know, getting a little trouble here and there. And his biggest fear was disappointing. You know, all of you. And, and, but who did he call? Every time. He called you because you loved him that much. And he knew you'd always be there. And he wanted to do everything he could to make us all proud. And I, I couldn't believe how much he reached those goals more than anyone else I've ever met and gave us more than anything but it was the love and support that he had that drove him that made him blow everyone's mind and that's the biggest thing that he achieved that I, I really hope I can be the same type of father that instills that in my kids and gives them that kind of drive and that kind of goal. They, they, they can have mistakes, they can, but I'm the beacon that keeps them leading forward. And uh, and that, uh, you know, my love is what guides them. So I, uh, you know, I love them very much. And y'all should all be very proud. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I was talking to Dick, and he said, you know, Andrew was just always the center of the room, you know, life of the party. And then he said he was real muscular. I think Dick is jealous of that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Spent a lot of time at the gym. So, big personality, affectionate, loved and accepted everybody. Jeff was talking about he being awesome and he'd go to breakfast and he'd, then he'd take breakfast to maybe people who were on the street, you know, stuff like that. It's just unseen stuff, you know, and just unseen by human eyes, but not unseen by the Lord's eyes. Talked a lot about Hog Creek Ranch. And that's what Vicki wanted to talk about, hunting and fishing with friends and cousins and everything outdoors. Mm -hmm. And as a mom would say, she said he was good looking and charismatic. <laughs> Talked about summer vacations in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Nieces and cousins, trips to England, where you got to see Nan's family. Paul writes, and Paul was at the end of his life when he wrote this. Paul was in his late 60s, probably. The time has come for my departure. You know this verse. I fought the good fight, finished the race. The life is more of a fight for some people than others. I, mean, I just get the sense that it was a fight for Andrew, you know. Mm -hmm. But to have fought the good fight, to have finished the race, and to have kept the faith, that can be said at any age. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to, to allow your life to be challenged by Andrew's life, even though it's a shorter life than any of us would have wished for. Jesus says these words. He says, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned he has crossed over from death to life but as we as we sit here we're all thinking the opposite we're thinking that andrew crossed over from life to death but that's not what jesus said he said when you believe me you cross over from death to life and then jesus says let not your hearts be troubled in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. And you know where I'm going, and you know the way. And there's a guy in every crowd that asks a question. I don't know if that was Andrew or not, but Andrew, uh, Thomas says, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said, well, I am the way, and I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
interestingly, the uh, in the first century, the when a man was in love and going to get married, he and his father would go and they wouldn't build a separate house. They would build on a room to their house. And this is what Jesus is referring to. In my father's house are many rooms. And he's going, so the father and the son would construct the room together. And when the father said the room was finished, that's when the marriage would happen. They would go get the bride and say, now we have a place to live. There's a uh, last thing I'll say other than the Lord's Prayer here is uh, there's a monument to Christopher Columbus in Valladolid, Spain, small town in Spain. And the, the Spanish uh, back in the, the 13 and 1400s had discovered everything there was. And so the monument was uh, of the national animal, which is a lion. And the, the national motto was the Latin ne plus ultra, which means, and beyond here, nothing, because they had discovered everything. And then this young upstart Christopher Columbus says, I think there's something more out there to the west. And he was right. And so the monument has the lion with his, one of his paws tearing off the first word in Latin, which is the negative, ne. So now it reads plus ultra, meaning beyond here something. I want you to hear this. Beyond here something. Don't you dare think that Andrew's story just ended. It's continuing, but you and I don't get to see it. But it's continuing, and a lot of it continues in you. But his story is just as vivacious as ever. You're going to, no matter how you walk from here, you're going to see all these monuments out here, and almost every one of them has two dates and a little dash between them. And if you do the math, if you're like math, some of those dashes are, represent 95 years, and some of them represent five years. Some of them represent 36 years. Every single one of them is about an inch and a quarter long. And I'm reminded when I'm out at a beautiful place like Oakwood, it's all short. It's all short. What you do from here forward matters a lot more than you and I think. So use your dash. Use your dash. I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer and ask you to bow your heads. If that's a prayer that's in your tradition, I invite you to pray that with me. We say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll leave you with two benedictions. The first one's from the little book of Jude in the New Testament. I like it because of the emphasis on the joy. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And then out of the Old Testament, the oldest blessing in the Bible. God gives these words to Moses to give to the priests. He said, these are my words to my people. So I'm a pastor. These are not my words. These are God's words to God's people. And this is what God says to you today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Family members and friends, this does conclude our graveside memorial service for today. If you'd like to stay around and share further words of comfort, consolation, friendship, you're welcome to do so. You do not need to feel rushed off. We have plenty of cold water here if you'd like some refreshment. Many of you have driven many miles to be together today. As you drive, please drive carefully and may peace, God's peace, abide in your hearts and in your homes both this day and always. You are dismissed. Let me, let me, let me, before, uh, before everyone leaves, or, or we, we have some uh, single flowers over here, if you'd like to, to lay one on Andrew's casket as your token of going away, uh, we invite you to do that, it's your, your choice, I guess, of colors, there's a, there's a yellow rose of Texas and there's a red rose. Um, and certainly would you know, welcome you you're doing that. Secondly, uh, after we are finished here, we have lunch at Mr. Taylor's house uh, at 5024 Meadowwood uh, in, 
I, I think I've sent that in address, but if anyone doesn't have it, come see me and I'll get it to you. And uh, so we'll have a lunch and we look forward to all of you joining us at lunch at Mr. Taylor's house. So, thank you.